Hey everybody, this video is all about our first two years with our reactive rescue dog, Luna. I want this video to be kind of short and sweet. We'll see how well I do. I have a video that I made about the first three months with Luna. You should go back and watch that if you have a reactive dog. I have notes that I, and hopefully I'm gonna stick to these so that I don't talk too much. We got Luna from a rescue called Chicago Canine Rescue. The first three to four months were really, really hard. She is leash reactive. There are different types of reactivity. Luna is a frustrated greeter, which means when she sees a dog she gets super excited and when she feels something like a leash holding her back or if there's a fence in the way or anything that's stopping her from getting right up to the dog so that she can greet it then she gets frustrated and that's where her reactivity comes from when we first got luna her reactions were huge i think i have footage of luna having a really huge reaction to a porcupine that we saw in northern michigan so i'm mm. gonna play that now if you have a reactive dog at home you might want to like put headphones in because it might make your reactive dog have a reaction but just to give you an example of this was the sound that Luna made every single time she saw a dog even like way down the street when we first got her. Okay, other things about Luna, she was a jumpy mouthy rescue. That's a whole thing that you can look into. It's basically a zoomy behavior. You know how you see dogs run around in circles? That's called the zoomies. One of the behaviors they might exhibit is jumping and nipping at you. She was a jumpy mouthy and she had very little bite inhibition. So we were getting bites every single day. Also, Luna was hyper aroused. She gets really excited about everything and had very little impulse control. There are a lot of factors that go into why Luna was so difficult. First of all, she was an adolescent. She had just begun her adolescence. Our trainer thinks she was probably about six months when we got her. Adolescence lasts from like five months to two and a half years sometimes. Luna is like just getting out of adolescence. Also other things that could have contributed to her having all the issues that she had. What her life was like in her formative years. We don't really know. The only things we know about her was that some farmers found her tied to their fence, which makes me so sad. Then she lived on the farm for a little bit before going to the rescue. Dogs that live on farms typically get to roam free and they're able to interact with other dogs freely. That can lead to later having leash reactivity if they don't learn how to greet dogs on leash. So that could have been a major factor into all of it. And then the last factor is her breed. We got a DNA test and we know that she's half German Shepherd, the other half is is a mix of Pitbull and Staffy. German Shepherds, for example, are bred to be super, super alert, super in tune with their humans. Staffies, Pitbulls, German Shepherds, they've all been bred to act on their impulses, to like run after that animal. All of these contributed to why she is the way she is. Now, if you have a reactive dog, you might be wondering, well, can you just fucking tell me what helps? The three things that helped us the most, positive reinforcement training, calm training, and medication. I have so much to say about all of these things, but let me just do like kind of a small deep dive. Oh my God, there's a baby bunny in the backyard. This might be a perfect opportunity for practicing some positive reinforcement training. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Luna to come over here and notice this bunny. We're gonna pay attention to her body language. I'm going to try and reward her for looking at the bunny and not barking or trying to get at it. Let's see. See, her ears are up. She sees the bunny. Yes. She gets a treat. Yes. Good girl. She gets a treat for looking back at me. Sit while you look at the bunny. Yes. So you see the timing needs to be like, as soon as her butt has hit the ground, she gets a yes, yes, Luna. She gets a treat for looking away from the bunny. So this is an example of positive reinforcement training and mark and reward training. She gets a treat because she's looking at the bunny and she's not chasing it. Her body is still really, really stiff. Like I'm looking at her tail right now, it's quivering. <laughs> so she wants to chase that bunny. And basically she's practicing some impulse control, but it's the timing of the yes to make sure that you're marking the behavior that's good. So for her, it's looking at the bunny. That's a good thing. She's allowed to look at the bunny. And you're also getting her before she has a bigger reaction to the bunny. And then she also starts to associate bunnies with treats. So it makes her happy. I'm not gonna let her outside though, cause she will chase the bunny if she gets out there. Next up is calm training. We use place training, which I talked about a lot in my first video. Luna is able to use her place to go to be calm and be by herself and stay put. I'm gonna give her a treat and tell her to go to her place. Place. 
Yes, Luna. So that's Luna's placement right there. As you can see, we were having fun with pizza boxes earlier. Dogs like Luna who are reactive, high energy, they actually need to be trained to be calm. I kind of sometimes liken Luna to like a dude on cocaine at a party who like feels the need to keep running around the party and going high five, high five, high five, yeah man, and like can't calm down. That's kind of what Luna is like when she's at a 10. By having a tool like place, something where we can direct her like, okay, you need to go and calm down. It's basically giving calm and the feeling of calm a command. All right, let's talk meds. The two medications that we use the most with Luna are fluoxetine, AKA Prozac, and Clonidine. Having medications for Luna completely changed her life and our lives and also made us feel like it was possible to keep Luna. Two months into having her, I wrote to the shelter and I was like, if things don't get better in a month, what would it look like to rehome her? It's heartbreaking to think about now, but like back then it was totally valid. We were kind of living in hell, but medications helped her so much. First, let me say, I am not a doctor, but I can just talk about Luna's experience with medications. So talk to your vet about whether or not your dog should have medications. SSRI like fluoxetine just kind of help level a dog out. Things that used to immediately bring Luna from zero to a hundred. Now it's like she's able to practice more impulse control. She's able to keep calmer longer because she's not so overwhelmed by anxiety and excitement. Luna weighs about 56 pounds. So she is on 40 milligrams of fluoxetine a day. She does 20 in the morning and 20 at night. Clonidine is a fast acting calming drug and it's really good for dogs who are really anxious about certain situations. So we give clonidine to Luna anytime she has to go to the vet. Also before she goes to doggy daycare, which is a really exciting and overwhelming situation for Luna, but it's also really good for her. And then we also give Luna clonidine if she is going to be around little kids. Because when she's on clonidine, she is way less likely to jump. It doesn't make her sleepy. She's still able to go on like an hour and a half long walk while on clonidine. All it does is help her to stay calm in whatever situation that she's in. Dogs are pattern-based creatures. So dogs live their lives pretty much on a pattern. You might notice if you have a dog that at the same time every day they might exhibit a specific behavior. Things like counter conditioning, calm training, and medication help to break old patterns that may be negative and help impart new patterns that are more positive and healthy and good for you and the doggy. So the thing with reactivity is it's a pattern. When a dog sees another dog and they start flipping out and barking and lunging, the longer they, they're able to stay in that pattern and the more often they're able to do that pattern, the more likely they are to continue exhibiting that pattern and for it to get worse. So that's why if you have a reactive dog, you don't wanna just let them have reactions. You wanna break the pattern. When you see her see another dog, stop the pattern before it happens of barking, lunging, whatever it is your reactive dog does. Clonidine was really helpful for us in the first few months for breaking the patterns. We would give her clonidine every single day, a half an hour before we would go for a walk. After a couple of months of doing that, then we slowly started to take her off clonidine before walks and she was so set in her pattern of like, oh yes, I'm very calm when I go for a walk at this time of day that we didn't have to give her the clonidine anymore. It was basically just like setting up a certain pattern. So something that's interesting that our trainer told us back when we were like, man, she's so good on our walks at 9 a.m. and she's so hyper and crazy on our walks at 1 p.m. I think it's just that time of day, she's extra crazy. And our trainer was like, it's more just that at that time of day, she's been allowed to perform a certain pattern enough times that now she's always gonna do that at one o'clock unless you change the pattern. So why don't you stop walking her during the one o'clock hour and instead focus on calm training and break that pattern. And then like in a month, you'll be able to walk her at one o'clock again. And stuff like that really, really works. We are now two years into Luna's reactivity journey and we still have ups and downs, but now we're able to recognize when a pattern is coming up. And it also helps mentally because it's not like, oh, this is just who my dog is. And th like, this is never gonna change. It will change. You, you might just need some aid, whether it's from medication like clonidine or 
taking a break from your usual routine, whatever it is. When it came to her mouthiness, like jumping and biting, we just basically had to break that pattern by showing her a new pattern. So when she's jumping and biting, we literally would just leave the room. When she would practice a different behavior, she chose to grab a toy instead, then we would celebrate big time. And I spent a lot of time handling toys and yes, letting her girl. have her mouth on my good hand girl. and reacting in different ways to show her what was an appropriate way for her to interact with my hand. That is a little dangerous and I don't recommend it for yes, everybody, girl. but I got to a place where I felt safe doing that with Luna and it's what finally helped her to understand like, oh, sometimes I bite too hard. Okay, I know this video is already getting long. <laughs> I'm gonna get through it. Things I would like to say to folks who have reactive dogs. Number one, it gets better. Everyone says that and it's 100% true. Keep reminding yourself it's gonna get better. I remember back in our first hellish few months, the one thing I kept Googling over and over again and I kept asking people was how long? Like I needed to know like how long is this going to go on for? And everyone would be like, well, it's different with different dogs. And I like hated that answer so much because I was like, I need to have something to mark on my calendar to look forward to. I wish I could go back to my old self and say like, even before the dog gets better, you're going to get better. But I did write down some things. Once we started doing the counter conditioning with Luna and dogs on the street, it took only about two weeks before I saw improvements. I was seeing Luna see a dog and look back at me for treats. That doesn't mean that she wasn't having reactions anymore, but it was like the hope was there. There were more and more moments to celebrate, which helped with my mental health. It did take two months for me to feel brave enough to leave our street. And I wanna say this to anybody who's watching, that is okay. If you have a reactive dog and all you do with your dog is take them outside and walk back and forth for a half an hour on your street, that is okay. People might look at you and be like, why is that person just walking back and forth on their street? When you have a reactive dog, there is a lot of shame involved and like humiliation because you're the person on the street with a dog who's going nuts. Some of those people might be judgmental of your dog. Well, guess what? You're fucking rehabilitating a dog in need and you're a fucking hero. So what you're doing is much more important. I walked back and forth for a half an hour every morning <laughs> for two months on our street and I still remember the day when I like got to our corner where I would normally turn around and like walk back but I was standing there with Luna and I was able to take a deep breath I tossed some treats on the ground so that she would have her nose down and be sniffing and eating I peeked around the corner saw that there were no dogs around the corner and I was like let's go and we walked like two blocks further and then came back. I learned how to be calm and confident on my walks with Luna. I could approach my walks with her in a way where it was like, she is probably gonna have a reaction at some point on this walk and that's okay. If we need to, we'll turn around and we'll go home. So it took about six weeks for Luna's SSRIs to kick in and for us to kind of see a major difference in how she was able to calm herself down and stuff. We were able to pass another dog directly on a sidewalk for the first time without any any kind of reaction or pulling or anything 11 months into having Luna. Since then, I've also learned that that's like really not important to me anymore. I used to feel like that was, it was really important to be able to do that. But actually crossing the street to avoid passing a dog directly is a good practice whether you have a reactive dog or if you have a totally calm dog. The most that she'll do these days when she's having a reaction is just pull and she's not making the crazy sounds anymore. She seems like a normal, excited, dog to other people, which is easier for us to have other people witness. It takes a dog about two years to get out of adolescence, sometimes a year and a half. So if you have an adolescent dog, that is the dog's craziest time of life and it will get better and they will calm down. Raise your dog the way that you want to raise them. There are so many people out there with different opinions and it can be hard because people are very harsh and judgmental. I strongly believe in positive reinforcement training. I would never, ever, ever use a prong collar or an e-collar or anything that could potentially increase her anxiety and I feel really strongly about that. Everything else is pretty much whatever kind of dog you want to have. So for example, we feed Luna from the table people food because I actually don't believe in people food versus dog food. I think that there's no reason for my dog to live her whole life only eating kibble. There's so many great foods out there that are so healthy for dogs that are technically people food. As long as there's 
there's no foods that could potentially make her sick on our plate. We let her lick our plates at the end of our meals, and because of that, she knows to lay at our feet super calmly for an entire meal. And then at the end of it, she gets rewarded. You can use things like that for your training if you want to. Don't let anybody judge you for things like that. Next thing I wanna say is take breaks for you, take breaks for your dog. Sometimes reactive dogs need to take a break from having triggers around them. When we first got her and we had her as a puppy and we hadn't started with a real trainer yet, a lot of people kept being like, well, she's probably got so much energy built up in her. She probably just needs way more exercise. So we were like exercising her for like four hours a day. We were going for these long walks. We were like taking her on these like long leashes out into fields and running full speed with her. And it was only making things worse. That's because we learned dogs like Luna who are hyper aroused actually need to take breaks from physical exercise regularly. When a doggy like her is like getting a lot of physical exercise, it can raise her levels of cortisol and that stuff can like stay in their bodies for sometimes like up to two weeks. Trainers say like, it's time for a cortisol vacation. So for two weeks, you have to remove the dog from, in extreme cases, any triggers. So it's like, don't let them see another dog for two weeks. We do cortisol vacations pretty regularly. Now cortisol vacations don't mean that the dog isn't getting any kind of exercise at all because there's other forms of exercise that are just as important, including mental exercise and enrichment and sniff work. One of our trainers said a dog sniffing for 10 minutes is equivalent to the amount of exercise they would get from a 20 minute walk. We do box puzzles like what we have over on our floor right now. She has to tear them up, get the treats out, any kind of sniff work, any kind of like indoor training, playing fetch in a backyard. Those are all valid forms of exercise and they could actually probably really benefit from taking a break from being on walks and seeing careers. And then taking a break for yourself, that means go for walks without your dog regularly. And it's also important for you to do that because humans are also a little pattern based. And if you're associating all walks with reactivity and stress and like being on high alert, that's not good for your dog either because the more stressed you are on a walk with your dog, the more likely your dog is going to be stressed. So go for walks by yourself so that you get into the pattern of like, when I'm on a walk, I can be calm. This is a journey for you and your dog. Let me make that clear. Along those same lines, reward yourself for your efforts. You better pour yourself a glass of wine or get yourself an ice cream, whatever it is, give yourself a little treat. Help yourself get through these times and to add a little bit of light in what is going to be at first a difficult journey, but I swear to you, it's going to get better. Learn your dog's body language. Most of that will occur just over time, getting to know your dog. You should look up calming signals because dogs have common calming signals that they use. For example, when Luna is feeling a little anxious, you'll see her lick her lips. After she's had a dog encounter, she will always do a big shake off. And that tells us like, okay, I'm calming myself down. So she gets a reward for that. So learning your dog's calming signals and body language is really important to stay on top of, oh, I can tell she's about to have a reaction because her body just went stiff. I think I need to start throwing treats on the ground and distracting her. Be ready to mourn, accept, and move on from certain ideas you had in your head about what having a dog would be like. I really wished I could take my dog to a restaurant, but I just don't think that they'll be calm enough. Okay, so now restaurant time is a time when I get a break from my dog and my dog gets to relax for the night. Your dog is who they are specifically and they're not gonna always fit into the boxes that you assumed a dog would fit into. And then last but not least, be ready to have the most amazingly, mind-blowingly fulfilling bond with your dog I'm crying. When you have a reactive dog and you're going through this training that is all about making eye contact, understanding each other's body language, telling your dog like it's okay to feel this way, it's you're okay in this moment. The bond you're gonna have with your dog is gonna be so much deeper than it would have been if you just had an easy dog. I gotta show you her, hold on. It's like, are you being proper? Through this experience, not only did we get so close with Luna, but we also became closer with each other and like it strengthened Brian and I's bond just to be able to like go through something that was really hard together and get through on the other side. I do have a message from Alyssa. She was there for me the most through our first four months with Luna because she, her dog Dolly is also reactive. I have a message from Alyssa about her journey with Dolly for you to enjoy right now. 
So when we adopted Dolly, I had never even heard the term reactivity before. But then within a couple of months after she had decompressed and gotten more comfortable with us, we discovered that she was extremely intensely fear reactive, particularly around dogs. We would drive her to these big open fields like a soccer field to walk her in just total isolation. And if she even glimpsed a dog like a hundred yards yards away, she would fully explode, like lunge up on her back legs, freaking out. There were many months there that I was crying like every day. My heart would race even just thinking like, okay, I should take her out soon. It just really wasn't what I had imagined having a dog would be like, and I was just totally unprepared. But I very quickly became immersed in the world of reactivity training. And there's this very common saying, your dog is not giving you a hard time, your dog is having a hard time. And this was so important for me to understand and really to embrace. Dolly had come from a very traumatic past. She was a part of a dog hoarding situation, and she learned that she was not always safe, especially around other dogs. And so our journey together was really about her relearning that she was safe with us and that if she saw a dog or another trigger, that she should look at us for what to do. And I remember I joined the Reactive Dog subreddit and I would read these posts from people who were like a year or two into their reactivity journeys. And they would say stuff like, you know, someday you'll be in a better place and you'll look back on this and you'll realize it was a really powerful profound bonding experience with your dog. And I would be like, yeah, fucking right. Like that will never happen. I will never see this as being anything but just totally brutal. But the truth is that three years later, I do feel that our reactivity journey together was intensely profoundly bonding. That she developed this very precious trust in us and we developed this precious understanding of who she is as like a unique life and personality and soul and she's really more than you know just our dog she's our family I hope that you all enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for some folks out there who might have reactive dogs or if you're thinking about getting a dog please 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 rescue and if you have some extra time to spare consider rescuing a reactive dog I'm gonna have lots of resources below it's gonna get better you're gonna get through to the other side just like we did with our sweet sweet little witchy baby girl Love you.